Hey, I'm Phil off of Phil Bike, and this is the latest version of my touring setup. So I've been through pretty much all of the options you can you can really go for if you're trying to carry a laptop when you're traveling around. Um, if you put them in panniers, that's easy. A laptop usually fits in a pannier. Uh, but if you want to go with a more bike packing approach, you can't really fit them in these little bags. And you can kind of put them in a frame bag, but I find that I always strike the frame bag, like stuff just falls to the bottom and hits your pedals. So I really hate big full-size frame bags. Um, and getting a laptop in your saddlebag is never going to work. So I'm trying this approach with a big old rack on the front. So the rack is a basil rack. I wanted to get a different one. It's fine. It's a bit kind of heavy and chunky, but it's, it's really strong and it can take 10 kilograms or whatever. And all I've really got in there is my laptop and a bit of padding and my buddy Finn here who's coming with me. Uh, and then everything else is, is much lighter. So instead of having um, kind of two big old racks that both my racks weighed 500 grams and then all the panniers were like 200 and something grams each. Instead, I've got this Cuban fiber. This stuff is made by Wild Sky Gear. You can find them on eBay and Instagram. So I've got the four dry bags and this Cuban fiber stuff is amazing. It looks just like a plastic bag, but it's like bits of Kevlar all mixed in together and it's like stab proof. Um, and it's really lightweight. These little buckles are tiny and, and the bag itself is like nine, 10 something grams. It's, it's really incredibly light. Yeah. And so this one takes my entire tent and pegs. This one back here is my um, enlightened equipment sleeping bag. Uh, and then I've got two more on the other side with a bit more stuff in it. But attaching it, quite easy. It's kind of a hacked together bike packing rig and I could do with tightening that, I guess. Um, up here, this is just one of the eyelets on the Surly. There's only the one eyelet. So to get this uh, King, King Cage, Menathing Cage on there, I had to use a um, kind of a hose clamp thing from, us, from King Cage as well. Uh, so it's basically a hose clamp with a uh, eyelet kind of, or a little bolt uh, welded onto it. So it's pretty sturdy apart from I could do a tightening that up. Um, and then you just have these, these follow straps. And again, they're really light and, and just kind of secure it on there. Uh, I was a little bit concerned about it at first, but it seems to be working out nicely. This Apertura frame bag, I've had this for a long time and I love it. It's amazing how much stuff you can grab, you can, you can shove in there. I've got a pump, a whole little bag of tools, uh, some emergency uh, chamois cream, food, a uh, power bank, a torch, and then this Silka uh, multi-tool. This, I'll show you real quick, it is the best multi-tool in the world. I love it. Um, it's kind of a do-it-yourself multi-tool. You can have in different configurations. I lost one of the bits, but you can kind of get into really hard to reach areas and, and do that. And it's got all the bits down there. And this is a little torque adapter. So if you need to torque up your uh, saddle or whatever without breaking the bolt, ID, uh, then you can hey. use this. <laughs> Pretty excited about this cockpit. It's not completely finished yet, but uh, I talked about the sink in another video. Um, this is a pretty decent USB-C charger with uh, runs off the, the Dynamo hub and has a battery bank in the steerer tube there. Um, so this will keep my bike computer and phone going. So I've got these two little Leo bags. A friend called Leo works at uh, Di Vicanti Pizza. Uh, he made these bags and they're really good quality. You can put food in the bottom and there's a little hole so it drains out. You put your wrappers in there and then if it rains, you don't just get gum and shit everywhere. So that's nice. And these little nets are good. It's a little menstrual cup to keep this dry when it rains. <laughs> Um, and obviously you keep Stroop waffles up here. These are really good for food and snacks and sun cream and emergency hand sanitizer because COVID. Um, so then the aero bars are Profile Design T3 Plus. They're pretty good. They're discontinued now, so I got them on eBay, uh, but I like them, they're really adjustable. Got my Wahoo Roam up top. I'm gonna review this guy pretty soon. So wait a second, what, what's up with the menstrual cup? Oh, uh, well, check out the other video, the Sync Plug Plus 5 Plug Plus 5 review, uh, and you'll find out what's wrong with the Sync. I, I love it, and it's in my bike, and I, I'm not going to replace it because there's nothing better. But when it rains, the water will get through there and in there somehow, regardless of what you do and how you put it. So you put this little Smurf hat on. This is a menstrual cup Smurf hat for your yeah. power bank. And then, and then it's fine. And then, yeah, this bridge is pretty handy. I've got a, a second mount spot. I haven't got myself. I want to get a backup device. Uh, on, when I tagged along on the AMR, everyone had two devices and it's really smart. Some days, like bloody today, 
this thing just wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to have an alternative so you're not looking at your phone trying to find out where you're going. So I'm going to move these things around a bit. Um, this is just a laptop and some foam and fin. There's really not much in there. It, it looks really big and bulky. Oh, and a pair of shoes. I think I'm going to get rid of the pair of shoes. It's still basically summer. Fuck it, I just got flip-flops. Look, floppy dangle. That's all you need. <laughs> and you have plenty of space for food in there as well. Yeah. So speaking of food, do you want to take a look at my kitchen? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Go. 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 Oh, God. You don't fit in Phil's uh, bike kit, but ah. you're cute. No, get out of there. That's all chemicals. <laughs> Go, shoot. There you go. That was sad, I wanted to play with him. Can't play with every dog because COVID. That's but. the worst part about COVID. So I've got one of these little foldable stoves, super light, super easy, squish them out like that. Esbit. Made by Esbit, absolutely. Great. Uh, then I've got a little one of, oh, this is a Tubo Lito. Uh, these can only go up to eight PSI, but they're like the lightest inner tube in the world. They're like 16 grams or something stupid, I can't remember, they're really light. Um, and only thrice the price of a normal inner tube. Then in this other little bag, I've got some solid fuel for the Esbit, so I won't bother getting them out. But yeah, they're really small and light. This will do like 10 meals or something. Here's a spoon I carved myself uh, by putting a little ember in there and, and chipping away at it. That's pretty fun. Heidi taught me how to do that. Uh, poop trowel. That's for when I poop. <laughs> Another old-fashioned inner tube, which is, you know, these are the same thing, but that's heavy as shit. Uh, we've got a coffee filter, which is important. I've got a mug, which should be dangling off the back of my bike. I'm a bad bike packer. Uh, a little frying pan and a little pot. Uh, they're all titanium, right? Mm -hmm. So they're pretty light. We're 150 grams total. <laughs> Hip flask, obviously. Not sure why it's empty. Uh, then weighs more than the camp kitchen. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this is a Soya mini water filtration system. Uh, so this is really helpful. You just shove water in there from anywhere that's not completely stagnant, like streams, um, and then kind of squeeze it through this into your other bottles. Um, and that works quite well. For when that's not going great, um, I have water purification uh, drops and tablets. So I can just kind of fill this up and dunk them in. Uh, I think it's one tablet per liter and you have to wait for like an hour or something. I'll look that up before I do it. Then I've got all arbitrary stuff. So, bit of spare grease. You can never have enough grease. If you get a squeaky bolt, you just shove that on there. A uh, bit of chain lube, some anti-insect -inse DEET. Don't put that on your face. And I've got two bits of spare tubeless, because these tires are tubeless again. Yes! <laughs> That's all the things. Oh, and a bit of like medical tape roll for if I get Achilles stuff going on. I just kind of shove it on the leg there and tape myself back together again. And a good Boy Scout always carries a bit of string. And, oh, I've got a giant knife somewhere as well. I uh, always want to have a giant knife. So that's pretty much that's pretty much my whole thing, apart from some clothes, which I don't need to show you. The saddlebag is mostly clothes. And, yeah, I've got another, some more, like, emergency clothing in the other chainstay bag. That's pretty much the whole setup. Now, how does it ride? Like a pig. Um, <laughs> I started off with only 20 PSI in my front tire and I was like, oh god, all this weight up front is bad and then I realised it was just a low tire. Uh, it's a bit better now. I'm really having to throw myself into the corners because when you come up to a corner and you just kind of like are trying to convince the bike to go round, it doesn't do shit. It turns like the Titanic. But when I kind of drop my shoulder and lean into it like I'm in a cross race, it, it seems to go around. Right, off to use my trowel. Just to give an update on the Cuban fiber bag experiment, uh, didn't go well. About an hour after making that video, we noticed some tiny little holes in them, um, which seemed to be coming from the abrasion on the Vola straps, both front and back. Um, these ones aren't so bad. I have some tear aid with me, so I kind of patched uh, some of the holes and then that tape. This tape actually is to stop the corners from kind of going into the wheel. Having a, having a square cornered bag is, is a bit problematic, so. Um, I've been patching these two on the back. Hopefully they'll make it through. I got all the way through Germany with, you know, those dodgy bags, um, but, uh, and I'm into Poland now, but I don't think they're gonna last too much longer. So on the front, I've got some hardcore Ortlieb waterproof bags. These things are really thick, seven liters each, and they fit quite happily up on the front. And just because I didn't really show exactly how I'd done it before, 
Ugh, tight. Here we go. So part of the problem causing the holes were that to keep these um, to keep these straps in place, I had a zip tie here, and the head had kind of come around and was poking a hole in the bag. So that's an obvious fix. You just spin it around and trim the head. Also, the bolt head under here can can cause a hole and can cause extra abrasion. So we've put uh, electric tape and um, some inner tube in here. So this approach did a lot of good and it, it limited the amount of damage being done, but the the buckle head on the outside and just the, the general kind of rubbing of the entire strap was still wearing holes through. So I'm kind of giving up on, on Cuban fiber for now. And if I do, it needs to be something that's specifically designed for bike packing. Um, a lot of things will have extra padding, extra thick material along the back, um, and then kind of slots on, on the bag, which are, are reinforced to put the straps through so that they're not bouncing around as well. Uh, so look out for that. You can't just shove any old dry bag on. Although these ought leave, I have no idea if they're designed for bikepacking or not, but they are pretty badass and they're working nicely so far.